My mother has been acting strange lately after coming home from meeting her friends. She's no longer been her bright, cheery self. She sits in her chair, crouched in a fetal position, with deep sadness carved into her face. If she's ever walking, she's pacing slowly and shifting her weight from side to side. My dad, my sister, and I have been trying to help her get better, but nothing seems to help. We've been trying to get her to talk about what she's feeling, and all she says is she's dead. She never means dead inside, but literally dead. She's asking us how we don't know that. We keep telling her that she isn't dead, and that she's right here. She keeps denying this and tries to inform us she's not supposed to be here. Mother has been making weird demands that we find her body, give her a funeral, let her go, that kind of thing. She says she sees her skin decomposing and smells her decaying body in the forest. I keep asking her what she's talking about. She's referring to a night she came home late after meeting friends. She came home around 11 p.m. and we assume she lost track of time. The strange thing was that her car is nowhere to be found. We asked her if she walked home and all she tells us is she died in a wreck. According to her, she slid off the road and her car tipped over. The impact killed her, she says. We've been trying to convince her that she's alive. She never lets us get close to her. If we try to touch her, she just moves away. I managed to touch her shoulder briefly and felt an icy chill. I asked her if she needs a blanket, and she replies, what's the point? I don't feel cold or anything. We took her to a local psychiatrist to tell us what could be wrong. According to the doctor, she may have been suffering from what's called Cotard's syndrome. What this implies is that mother is under the delusion that she is deceased. All she told him was that she is deceased and is trying to tell everybody. In the meantime, we've been looking for a car. We concluded she was stranded on the side of the road and walked home and somehow forgot about it. We could not find a car anywhere between home and the bar. She replied with, you're looking in the wrong place. Nothing is helping. When I got a call from the police, the officer on the line said that a car was found on the side of the road tipped over. The person inside who had been dead for days fits my mother's description. They wanted someone to come to the morgue and identify the body. I was frozen with uncertainty after hanging up. My mother walked up to me and I felt a cold draft wafting through my body. See you at the funeral was the last thing she said before she evaporated in the thin cold air. It all started on the 14th night of March, the night of my parents' 20th wedding anniversary. It was a wonderful, sunny day, if memory serves. Surprisingly warm for being the beginning of spring. The beautiful weather was perfect for the atmosphere of the day. Being married for 20 years is obviously a momentous occasion, so my parents had booked a table at our favorite Italian restaurant. Of course, this was a formal occasion, so I had my best suit on. It was 5.33, and I was just straightening my tie when my phone went off. I'd received a message. That's strange, I thought. That never happens. I checked the message. It was from my mom. It was quite a jumble of numbers and letters, but through the vocabulary stew, I could make out one legible phrase. Please help me. It should go without saying that this worried me greatly, so I immediately replied, Are you okay? Just as instantly I got another text which read, Oops, pocket text. I sighed with all the relief I had and continued to prepare myself. A few minutes later, I received yet another message. This time from my dad. I checked the text and once again, it was a massive mixture of letters and numbers with the phrase, please help me, concealed within. Creepy though this was, my dad was always a joker, so I presumed he was just joking around, until I was sent another text saying, oops, pocket text. Now this sparked panic. Pure, 
unmistakable panic. Exactly half a minute passed when I received the exact same two messages from my sister. This could not be coincidental. It just couldn't. In a state of sheer anxiety, I started to run to the restaurant. I made about a quarter of the way before I was stopped by a police officer. Main roads closed, he said. Huge car crash. This was the exact moment I realized just what had happened. I demanded to see the wreckage, a request which I was surprised was allowed. When I got there, it wasn't the remnants of the car that caught my eye, nor the flames billowing from the destroyed vehicle, no. I was horrified to see the lifeless corpses of my mother, father, and sister. I asked for the estimated time of their deaths. All three of them were killed instantly by the collision at 5.32, a minute before the very first text.